Hey pre-calculus, this is our last video to review. This touches on standard um, complex numbers B5, which is really about understanding how the geometric properties of our arithmetic, our, our multiplication and division and addition, help us um, to understand what's happening when we multiply and add and subtract complex numbers. So let's dive right in. Um, there are two numbers, Z1 and Z2 and they're related by this equation. And if you remember, this looks a lot like equation we had on um, the diagnostic quiz we took. It says the number w has a modulus of 4 and argument w of 50. So it actually already told us the modulus and argument of this number w that we're multiplying by. It says, what is the measure of the angle between z1 and z2 in the complex plane? Explain how you know. Okay, so this question seems kind of intimidating at first. It's asking about angle between numbers but only, we only have information about W and we know how they're related. Um, here's a hint for us, it says in the complex plane. So when we're talking about things in the complex plane, we're thinking geometrically, in other words, geometrically. So we should be starting to think about what does this look like and what do I know happens geometrically when we do something like multiply by a number. So I'm going to make a little sketch over here of our picture. We have some numbers, Z1 and Z2, we don't know where they are. I'm just going to plot two numbers. Um, oh, actually, we don't know what their angle is even yet. I'm just going to plot a number z1 because z1 is getting multiplied by w. So one number is z1 right here. I just plotted it somewhere. Now it's saying, what's the measure of the angle between them in the complex plane? The only thing we know that's going on here is z1 is being multiplied by w to get z2. So that's the only relationship we have. That's just me stating this equation up here kind of as a sentence. z one's being multiplied by w to get z2. We should know in this class, we have to know at this point that multiplying by a complex number um, is going to have two geometric effects. Um, when we multiply pi complex, we get two transformations. We get um, z1 will be rotated by the argument of the number it's being multiplied. So it's going to here be multiplied by the argument of w. Um, and that's step one, it'll be rotated. That's one effect. And another effect is, and dilated by 4, or multiplied in size by 4. Uh, or, sorry, dilated by the modulus of w. So that's what happens in general. Whenever we're multiplying a number by another number w, it has two effects. It dilates by the modulus of that number, and it rotates by the argument of that number. So we know that z is going to transform. We know it's going to rotate um, whatever the argument of w is. Well, wait a second. We know what the argument of w is. It gave it to us. Argument of w is 50 degrees. 50 degrees. And it also gave us the modulus. The modulus of w was 4. So we know that z1 will be rotated by, the argument, by 50 degrees and dilated by 4. So going back to my picture, I'm going to make a sketch saying this, this, this number z1 right here is going to be rotated 50 degrees. I'm just kind of estimating what 50 degrees would look like. I'm not actually 100% sure. I know the total here is 90, and maybe it was at 20 already, so we'll call this like 70 right here. So it's going to it's going to rotate 50 degrees. Maybe this is 50 degrees here. I also know it's going to dilate by a scale factor of four. So it was about that long to begin with. It's going to be one, two, three, four times as long after it's dilated. So just by understanding what happens geometrically when we multiply two complex numbers, I can make a sketch of like, if z1 started there, it's going to rotate 50 degrees and get dilated out four times to get to um, z2. All right, let's go back to our question and see if we can take all this information we've talked about and use it to answer our question. It says, what is the measure of the angle between z1 and z2 in the complex plane? How do you know? Great. 
So looking at our picture, we can answer that right away. Because Z1 got rotated 50 degrees, we know the angle, the angle, let me use a smaller pen here, the angle between Z1 and Z2 will be 50 degrees. Because, right, it says how do we know? Because Z1 will be rotated by the argument of W. We know that's going to happen. Whenever we multiply by a number, it's going to get rotated by that number's argument, rotated by the argument W, and dilated. Uh, actually, we, we didn't ask us about dilated yet. It'll be rotated by the argument of W, um, which is 50 degrees. So we know the angle is going to be 50 because Z1 is going to get rotated. Argument of W, argument of W is 50 degrees. Okay. So that does a pretty good job for the first one. Actually, the second one is going to help us. It's all tied to the same type of thing. Um, it says, how many times longer is Z2's vector uh, than Z1's vector? How do we know? So remember, back to our original, our original question, we didn't know anything about Z1 and Z2 other than they're related by W. Um, so if we may, I'm just going to repeat this sketch down here. Maybe make this a little bit smaller of a Z1. If I made my Z1 right here, uh, I'm going to sketch actually a different Z1. So say my Z1 was oh, over here, down there, Z1. You know, this Z1 is going to get rotated by 50 degrees, because that's what happens when we multiply. It's going to get rotated by 50 degrees. And it's going to get dilated by a scale factor of four. So if our original one was about that long, it's going to be four times the length. One, two, three, four times the length. That might be our Z2 over there because it got dilated by the modulus W. So in short, um, the angle. What are we answering here? Z2's vector, the vector for Z2 will be four times longer than Z1's because Z1 will be dilated by the modulus of w, which is 4. So we're able to do a lot of this work just by knowing what, um, by knowing what the geometric effect of multiplication is. When we multiply by a number, we get a rotation by the argument and a dilation by the scale, by the modulus. Um, we're going to be able to use that key fact to help us in all of these questions down here. Like, What's the relationship between W times Z and Z? Well, again, look, we're getting a multiply by a number. We're getting a multiply. So we know there should be, there should be two relationships, right? Once it's, there's some rotation is going to happen and some dilation is going to happen. Um, without dividing the numbers, what's the argument of 1 over W um, times Z? We didn't talk explicitly about dividing, but if multiplying rotates counterclockwise, uh, right, I guess I could add up here, if we rotated counterclockwise positively, when we're dividing a number, we're just inverting that. We're going to be rotating clockwise. And then instead of dilating by instead of dilating by the modulus of W, we're going to be dilating by we're going to be dilating by one over the modulus. So we're going to be like instead of multiplying by a factor of four, we'll be scaling it down by a factor of four. We're dividing it down by a factor of four. Cool. And then in question three, it says now compute the quotient, then find its argument 
Um, so this means do a division problem, like do the division. And then use your answer to check that number two is correct. So take some time and work through these. Um, when we review on Friday before this quiz, we'll come back to this section in particular because I feel like this will be the most challenging one for everyone to conceptualize because um, it's also the most recent thing we've covered. So um, try these out, bring these in, and this will give you a boost if you've done some thinking on these in your test grade for the first module. All right, see you all soon.